Coming up on show 869, Tesla are going to bring in a Model Y mega casting machine. Stick around, I'll give you the details. Plus, today we're talking about an ultra-fast battery-boosted EV charger, 400 new EV points for a big city in the UK, and a glowing review for the Peugeot E208. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you're listening in the world, welcome to EV News Daily for Monday, 17th of August. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story, so you don't have to. Think of me like your time-saving device. You want to stay on top of the news, what's happening, but, you know, there's so much going on. You need a filter, and I try and do that in 15, 20 minutes, between about 7 and 10 stories, just the biggest, most important things you need to know about and cutting out all the noise around it. So Tesla are bringing in a giant casting machine for the Model Y. One of the new giant casting machines has now arrived at Tesla's main factory. That's in Fremont, California. As a reminder, the factory uh, where the machine is is uh, based is uh, Tesla's HQ, if you're a new listener. Uh, Well, one of their big buildings, but uh, their spiritual home, at least in California. The machine will be used uh, to cast the rear frame of the Model Y. And they're going to do that in a single piece before the end of the year. Uh, In Germany, changes are afoot as well with the Gigafactory Berlin site, making that an even more efficient factory build and not needing as much infrastructure around it to build the factory as had previously been thought. Now, Elon Musk has already commented on the new casting machine via Twitter, and I quote, will be amazing to see it in operation. Biggest casting machine ever made. will make rear body in a single piece, including crash rails, end quote. New approach, according to Electrive.com, the industry service website, says the new approach should speed up the production of Model Y, making it cheaper as well. The die casting machine uh, will use aluminium rather than steel, and rather than 70 different parts, it'll be only four elements in the future and and eventually as well in the berlin gigafactory that will be one a single piece of casting back in a podcast back in june uh, elon told us about those details and he told us about how the model y in berlin whilst it will look like the model y is coming out of california will be vastly different. They're getting better at making the cars. And that's why he said that the Model Y that is made in in Gigafactory Berlin about a year from now. I reckon if that factory is producing customer cars by next July, that's a big old win. Uh, Elon said that actually the cars will look like Model Ys but they'll be totally different underneath. Just the stuff they've learned about how to make cars, everything is being rolled into that factory. And you know everything they've learned in China, then Berlin, that'll be rolled into the Texas Gigafactory or Terra Factory, whatever you want to call it. Uh, And it's great to see a company on such a a momentum and learning as they go along as well. I'll pop a link to Electrive in the show notes if you'd like to know more. This is a really interesting story next, and a very interesting concept, a bit of an interesting innovation, something we've talked about for a long time, which is cars are charging faster now, and some cars are charging 270, 280 kilowatts on the latest high-powered chargers, cars like the new Lucid, which is coming, the Lucid Air, that's a 900-volt system. That's probably going to take about 350 kilowatts of charge speed. Now, that's all well and good. And they can make the cars and the batteries that take it, and they can make the chargers to supply the juice. Getting a grid connection that can supply that is mega expensive. So one of the ways around it is to have battery storage. And those batteries... Not so much trickle charge, but they certainly charge quickly. I mean, there's a big old fat pipe coming in from the grid, but not the full speed the car can take. And that is kind of predicated on the idea that the cars aren't always charging. So when the car's not charging, the battery is pulling from the grid and topping itself up. And then when a car comes along and plugs in, it dumps a huge amount of power into the car from the grid and the battery very, very quickly. Now a new company called Freewire Technologies has inked a deal with a convenience store chain. They're called AMPM, and they're going to be putting what's called battery integrated boost chargers. And uh, these convenience stores, by the way, uh, oh, talking of which, by the way, under the umbrella of BP, BP America, which is the subsidiary of BP, are involved in this. Now, uh, why is it important? Well, a convenience store, they say, has about a dwell time of 15 minutes that you are... If the convenience store is at a petrol station, then the time it takes you to fill up your car with petrol, walk into the convenience store, pick up some groceries, pay for your fuel and go, 
the average is between 10 and 15 minutes. So they are looking at the next generation of EVs stopping for 15 minutes. So they need to dump a huge amount of power into the car quickly, but they don't want people. These aren't people who are going to be hanging around in that store very long. They don't want you on their charger for very long. And so a speedy charge of 15 minutes is really all they want you to do. And you know what? If you're charging at 350 kilowatt charge speeds, it's all you're going to want, really. If you're just, it's a, think of it as a splash and dash. You're pulling in, picking up some supplies, and heading on to your next journey or home or into work or something like that. And batteries make that possible. And it's cheaper to do it with a battery than it is to upgrade the grid connection in many places. And so, for so many high powered chargers going in, yeah, the chargers are expensive. Yes, the hardware is expensive. Yes, it's expensive to, to, to develop. But by far and away on some of these sites, the biggest expense is digging up the road, digging up the pavement, and then getting the electricity board to do all of the hardcore grid work. Do it with batteries, and you're saving some money. Now, here's a city that is installing 400 new EV charge points, and it's Birmingham. And that would be Birmingham in the Midlands, not Birmingham, but Birmingham in the middle of the country. Uh, Birmingham City Council is rolling out new charge points from this autumn, uh, 400 in total, with uh, some investment of about £3 million from OLEV. That's the Office of Low Emission Vehicles, OLEV, OLEV, it's what we call it, and uh, the EV network development partner ESB. Over the next two years, they'll put 400 rapid charges in across the city of Birmingham, mainly for the taxi fleet actually and it's one thing that i noticed coincidentally although this could be any big any big city i went to birmingham a couple of years ago and there's a big taxi rank at birmingham train station or one of the train stations there and it, it kind of loops around and i guess on a busy day the cabs would be queued up in this kind of donut this big loop the time i went it wasn't busy there was yeah, maybe five or ten cabs waiting. And so as I was looking at this this area where the cabs queue up, this kind of ring of pavement where they all circle around, I was looking at the floor and thinking, like, that's a really weird pattern. Like, why is there these, these like, black marks, these black rings around the road? And it took me, like, duh, that's because of the diesel exhaust pipe. So taxis sit idling at the taxi rank because they don't want to be turning their engine on and off as they're creeping forward. And the tarmac was stained black with, and then I was like, oh, now this was probably when I was into EVs, but maybe not as much as I am now. And even then I remember thinking, well, that's crazy. I mean, that's like taxi should be electric. And so it's great that these charges are going into Birmingham uh, for a lot of taxis as well. And I hope one day I'll go back to that train station and maybe they've cleaned it up and maybe the road won't look like that and be totally stained with diesel pollution. If it's doing it to the road, what's it doing it to our doing to our kids' lungs? Anyway, moving on. Uh, Peugeot, the Peugeot E208 is the subject of our next story. You got a glowing review from Top Gear. That would be Top Gear the website and magazine, not Top Gear. The television show, different things. You know, same, same, but different, different. Uh, although they do have a picture of the TV presenters at the top of the page, a little bit of uh, uh, glory taken from their images, but really the TV show is light entertainment these days at best, really. It kind of fills some mindless TV time. It, it, that's if Top Gear is... Is it still on? Anyway, um, whereas the, the webs... I, I used to buy the magazine when I was a teenager, when it first you know, came out, and uh, the website is brilliant, great journalism on that, and so very different things. Uh, they have reviewed the Peugeot E208, and if you're looking at the pictures and wondering, doesn't look very EV-ish, well, that's because the way that Peugeot are doing it, or PSA Group, Peugeot Citroën Group... Uh, uh, that's the way they're doing it. They're having a bit like BMW, the car, and then different powertrains. And so whether it's the 208, the 308, here in Europe, uh, the 2008, the DS3 Crossback under the DS brand, uh, the Vauxhall slash Opel Corsa, uh, the Mocha, the Citroen C4, all with pure electric power or combustion, if that's what you want. Now, the E208 gets a glowing review from uh, Top Gear. Uh, they say that it's cheap to operate, like all EVs, it'll do around 200 miles, and real world, when it's a bit colder, on the motorway, 160 odd, they say. Uh, they got 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour out of it in a 65 mile test, uh, which they say is very good. I don't know if it's very good. 
I suppose for the size of vehicle that it is, it's on the it's on the upper it's on the upper end of being very respectful, uh, uh, respectable rather. Yeah, pretty good that. Um, it's not range beating. It's not the best out there, but three point nine miles per kilowatt hour is pretty good. Well done them. 100 kilowatt charge speed on these cars, 50 kilowatt hour battery. And I say these cars because it's the platform, it's the CMP platform. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, and it's because all of these cars are built and the vans they're making as well on exactly the same specs and all very solid. Nothing here that's going to break any records. 134 brake horsepower. Uh, it's a good regen mode, uh, D mode on that for some uh, full regen. 93 miles an hour top speed, but you know you get caught doing that in this country, and you're in for a world of pain anyway because the speed limit is 70, and they like it. So uh, seven out of ten for that car. Say Top Gear. All right, moving on. And a company called Digital Motors wants to bring the Tesla experience to everyone, and it's not clear that car dealers don't want to sell online, it's that many of them don't know how to, says Bloomberg today. Automotive e-commerce, a start-to-finish transaction, requires a digital platform that makes the vehicle look good, links through to your inventory, and of the 17,000 or so dealerships in the US, as tracked by the National Automobile Dealers Association, the vast majority are small businesses, and they're not set up for digital trading. There's a new company called Digital Motor Corp, and it says it will do it for them, and it will give their customers the Tesla experience, a plug-and-play software package uh, that will turn any car dealership that wants to move to selling EVs into a digital business. Coincidentally, following this story today, last Saturday's uh, special interview uh, with Trey Wooshty, uh, have a listen to that, because the Saturday special just gone is all about how you will buy and sell cars, how dealers fit into an EV world, how dealers fit into a digital world. Now, uh, Trey, as you may have heard on this podcast before, is a sponsor of this show. So we did a Zoom call for anyone that wanted to dial in, and he was uh, talking to them, uh, the, the, the the viewers, the participants, asking them questions. I asked if we could record it, and he kindly said yes, so we published it as a podcast. Have a listen to that. It's a really fascinating, because he's moved his business to digital already. So, just as Elon gets a lot of credit for buying a car quickly online, the whole Tesla grab your mobile phone from your pocket and buy a car thing, that's what Trey's done with his. And they've got uh, Honda, um, uh, Porsche, uh, they've got a ton of them, Maserati and uh, Toyota. There's loads that I'm probably forgetting. Uh, Audi, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, uh, if you want to go online and buy a Volvo from them, uh, you can do that, right? And so they've done it already, but what about the other dealers that aren't digitally savvy. I mean, he's got hundreds of employees that we were talking about at the weekend. And so this company here wants to take that Tesla experience of buying something online and giving small dealers, or maybe even, you know, one man band, sole traders, uh, the opportunity to do that in an EV world. Brilliant news. Moving on. And the UK government uh, is being urged to set quotas for EV uh, car makers to sell Global Action Plan. The charity behind Clean Air Day is calling on the government to introduce new electric vehicle sale quotas for car manufacturers of 15%. This is similar to, well, we do have an emissions quota here, but this is more like the Chinese model has been over the last few years. Uh, similar, but not same, same. Um, if introduced, it would mean that 15% of new cars sold by a brand would need to be a pure electric by the year 2030. I love schemes like this because it makes the headlines, it raises awareness, it starts conversations. But frankly, you know, if a big car maker isn't selling 15% of their cars pure electric by the year 2030, they are in big, big trouble. So great that this survey, this campaign group has said that, but really we're going to be there in the next five years, not 10 but good on them. And that's my opinion. All right, moving on. Final story today. Spy shots of the new BMW X1 have been seen. And why is this important? Because the X1 will spawn the iX1. Uh, the website paultan.org says our spy photographers in Europe have seen the new BMW X1 uh, in covered in camouflage. It is going to be 
internal combustion. It's going to be plug-in hybrid, and it is going to be fully electric. The iX1 will match the iX3, and so on and so on in the BMW range. I think the plug-in hybrid is going to be very, very popular uh, for the kind of buyer for this who isn't ready for full electric, but they do want a plug socket. They want to do some electric motoring. Maybe they want to feel green or whatever. So I think the plug-in version... Uh, of the of the X1 will be popular, like the Volvos are. Uh, but I think the All Electric is going to be really popular as well if they get it right. Let's wait and see on the specs on that, uh, the kind of price and the specs they come out with for that car. It's a little way off, but it's driving around in camouflage, so we know it is on the way. And that's your show for today. Thank you for listening. Email me anytime about any of the stories that you hear. Uh, email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on the YouTube show. You know, in the archive, there are 868 previous shows, quite a few interviews, uh, Saturday specials we call them, uh, but also plenty of news shows to listen to as well. But the new ones, in fact, you're interested in the new news, as it were, uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and you'll get it first and free and automatically in your podcast app. Thank you to our premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, NationalCarCharging.com and AlohaCharge.com and also Derek Riley with his EV Review Island YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day. Catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.